Does your diaphragm actually produce lactate at high intensity? In this video, I'll use my experience from the hundreds of endurance tests that I've conducted to challenge the respiratory system and see if we can measure the work of breathing and lactate produced by the respiratory muscles and the diaphragm at high intensity. All right, let's jump right in and look at how we're going to do this. So I typically do uh, the physiological testing using a, a 4-1 format, four minutes on, one minute off. Uh, and here are some typical responses that we'll see on whole body tests, whether it's running or cycling. So obviously heart rate's gonna go up incrementally on each stage and we'll see the heart rate drop during the minutes of rest. Uh, the lactate is typically gonna look something like this with the low intensity response, the medium intensity response and the high intensity response. Um, and we see the two thresholds emerge here, threshold one, threshold two. If we look at muscle oximetry measured with the, the MOXIE, we'll see um, this type of trend, kind of an increase typically on the low intensity, and then a kind of a flat line at medium intensity and a pretty significant drop at high intensity. The MOXIE doesn't always present like this. Uh, I'll refer you to my video with uh, Jem Arnold on the topic if you want to go a little bit deeper into it. Uh, same thing again, we see those thresholds emerge. Uh, and the RPE response, which uh, we typically see the first threshold uh, appear around 4 out of 10, and the second threshold around 7 out of 10. Uh, now for the respiratory step test that I did with uh, my athlete Jules, uh, using the Breedway Better from Isocapnic, we modified the step test a little bit because the four minute stages were going to be very long and an hour of respiratory training is, is, a, is a very long time if you've ever done it. Uh, so the step duration, we went from four minutes down to two and a half minute per uh, step. Uh, then we decreased the rest from one minute to 30 seconds. So it was two and a half minutes on one minute off. Uh, for the intensity, uh, instead of going up in watts that we would do on a bike or kilometers per hour on the run, uh, we actually use respiratory frequency as the measure of intensity, always trying to maintain high volume of breathing throughout each stage. Uh, and we went with 15 breaths per minute on the first stage, and we went up five breaths per minute each stage all the way to failure. And we measured heart rate, uh, RPE, lactate at the end of each stage, and SMO2 with the MOXIE monitor. So the heart rate response, interestingly enough, we have something similar to what we saw with the whole body exercise. So again, Jules did this sitting on a bench. He had the breathe way better. And so he was breathing at 15 breaths per minute for two and a half minutes, then took 30 seconds rest, then went to 20 breaths a minute, and then kept going up and up and up. So similar response to what we saw with the whole body exercise, uh, which already is, is, is interesting. To my knowledge, this type of test has not been done yet or documented. If some people have done it, I'd love to see your data. I'd love to see your information. Um, and I, I hope that more people will uh, document this in the future. Now, if you look at lactate, super interesting response. Uh, we have a slight decrease in lactate or at least a flat line at low intensity. So typically we see this on whole body exercise, even though we increase external load or intensity, the internal load measured uh, through lactate will stay the same. Uh, then we have an inflection point and a slight increase uh, here at, we'll call it medium intensity. And then we see a clear departure and a clear upward trend. Uh, and again, we see those two kind of balance points, inflection points. Those are not ventilatory thresholds, right? Because those are measured with gas exchange, but we can essentially see that by increasing the intensity of breathing, we have the same uh, effect uh, on the breathing muscles as we have on a whole body exercise. And again, to my knowledge, this hasn't been documented, at least not in that way. Uh, and it's really interesting to see that for Jules uh, above that, uh, I think it was about 45 breaths per minute, that second inflection point, well, his respiratory muscles start to fatigue significantly. And if we look at the MOXIE monitor trend, uh, I had placed the MOXIE on his intercostals. And so there's quite a bit of noise here on the, on the data, but if we simplify it just a little bit uh, and we take some averages, 
we see a similar trend to what we would see on a whole body exercise, again with the MOXIE increase in SMO2 at low intensity, uh, flatline at medium intensity, and a decrease at high intensity. Uh, again, very interesting responses on a breathing-only exercise. Again, those two balance points that emerge. And again, RPE seems to match 4 out of 10, 7 out of 10 uh, for those two inflection points. And if we put it all on the same graph, we see the SMO2 response, and then we see the lactate response. Typically, SMO2 and lactate uh, almost mirror each other, right? They have kind of a reverse or inverse relationship. Uh, so what can we learn from that information? Before we go into the details, I just updated my Restory program, Breath Master. So if you want to join the pioneers of Restory training uh, in this new program and master your breathing uh, for exercise, click the link in the description to join Breath Master. And if you're watching this video in the first few days, uh, I have a 30% off coupon for uh, your Breathe Way Better. Thank you, Luke, and all the team at Isocapnic for this great promotion. I don't make a dime uh, uh, on this promotion. Um, so on the program I do, because it's my program, let's be clear, but not on the Breathe Way Better. 30% off, it's uh, all for you. I don't get anything from it. Let's keep moving forward. So what can we learn from this test, uh, I think the idea of individualized training around respiratory training is really interesting, right? We can see the quote unquote low, quote unquote medium and quote unquote high intensity for Jules. So for, for him below 30 breaths a minute is low intensity for his breathing muscles. Between 30 and 45 is medium intensity and above 45 is high intensity. Uh, we know thanks to uh, Tomek Kowalski uh, and uh, colleagues, that restoring muscles do induce an additional load in well-trained triathletes. Uh, so essentially, restoring muscles act like any other muscles. Respiratory training is like any other training, uh, and we have to consider it in the, the global load management. And again, we see this, right? The higher the frequency of breathing, and obviously the longer and the more difficult the session is going to be, the more load is going to be uh, applied on the, on the body. Uh, so we have that individual respiratory profile and we could use this uh, for well-trained athletes in respiratory training because you, you need a certain level of training before you could do a, a test of that duration that's 30 minutes of, of respiratory training uh, with some intensity towards the end so i wouldn't do that if it's your first time around and in the breath master program that i uh, told you about a couple minutes ago this is phase three so we're going to we do that after we've done already four months of respiratory training, um, but you will explore this in Breathmaster uh, if you go through with all the programs that are included. And so for someone like Jules, well, we could start planning his respiratory sessions based on those different frequencies uh, so that we can uh, respect those uh, different intensities and uh, plan accordingly, just like we would plan any other type of endurance training, right? Uh, progress tracking. This is a whole body test that I had done with my colleague Alex on the bike. Uh, one, one year interval between the, the blue line, the blue lactate and the red lactate lines. Uh, heart rate in yellow on the first test, heart rate in green on the second test. Again, about a year difference between the two and a lot of, a lot of cycling. Um, same format as I described at the beginning, four minutes on, one minute off. So we could imagine seeing a similar uh, change in respiratory uh, muscle lactate and dynamics following um, following a structured program, uh, right? So we could hypothesize that if uh, today, so this is pre-intervention, pre-hypothetical intervention, because we haven't been able to apply this uh, practically yet. If this is his individual respiratory profile, uh, this might be what we're looking at post-intervention, right? So we can move those thresholds to the right, if we, if I may call them thresholds, uh, respiratory muscle thresholds, maybe is, is a term we could use. Uh, we could push this all to the right and um, make his work of breathing easier so that, for example, here, now when he's breathing at 50 breaths per minute, before it was high intensity for him and his diaphragm and his respiratory muscles were fatiguing, whereas uh, post-intervention, well, now 50 breaths a minute is actually medium intensity. It's sustainable, and there won't be the same amount of fatigue uh, imparted on uh, his body in general. Uh, this is another option, and you have to consider this. The cost of breathing at high intensity is substantial. Uh, for untrained uh, sedentary people, we're around 10% of VO2 max. 
that is um, going directly to your respiratory muscles. Uh, there's between 50 and 60 muscles involved in the work of breathing at high intensity, if my memory serves. Uh, for highly trained endurance athletes, it goes upwards of 20%. So 20% of your VO2 max goes towards your respiratory muscles, which is humongous. And obviously, if you train them, they become more economical, they become stronger, more endurant, and you're able to spare some of that oxygen uh, and redirect it towards the legs. Um, the current limitations and unknowns that I wanted to highlight, uh, lack of data. So this is one test, one data point. Uh, I'd love to do more with some of my athletes moving forward. Uh, but and I'd love to see your data. If you, if you, I show you mine, you show me uh, yours. Uh, I'd love to to share in that in that realm. Uh, protocol customization. Uh, I use this format because I was used to it on my exercise, on my endurance tests. Uh, but we could imagine some different protocols that could uh, come into play. Um, workout planning. I think there's so much to do in that realm when it comes to respiratory training. We're still at the very very beginning of how to organize training around. Uh, respiratory training and around uh, individual profiles. Uh, respiratory load management, what can we do on that side of things? Uh, I think this might be a starting point to think about, uh, but I'd love to have your input on that. And tr uh, training according to general profile, so might we see different profiles emerge on the respiratory side over time, and then could we tailor training uh, to this? Um, yeah, I'd love to hear your ideas, your comments, your feedback, your criticism. I'm open to everything. So this was done uh, with a trained athlete who had eight months of respiratory training behind him already when we did that test. Uh, we used the VO2 Master Manager app to collect the data. Uh, we used the isocapnic breathe way better uh, for the test itself. Again, 30% off with the code that you'll find in the description until the 22nd of April 2025, if you're lucky enough to catch that video in that interval. And I used the Lactate Scout 4 for the um, measurements. Uh, and the Moxie monitors uh, on the intercostals. I also had one on the quad. Didn't give uh, uh, much information. Unlike on whole body tests where you could see some interesting dynamics on non-involved muscles, I think the muscle mass involved in the work of breathing here just wasn't sufficient to, to show something on a non-involved muscle. Uh, so here you go. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, drop them below. If you have any ideas, drop them below. Uh, I look forward to... Um, uh, connecting with you and uh, exchanging with you around those ideas. Uh, if you'd like to see more videos on respiratory training or breathing in general, uh, make sure you leave a comment and I will see you in the next video. Take care.